three Jaguars bowl predictions. I say we just go one by one. Okay. We analyze. We speak on them. And then we just keep going around in a circle till we're all completed here. Is, are we good with that? We're good. Hamby, you good with that? Uh, yeah. Now, if you somehow try to tie a Georgia player or Kirk Cousins to this, I'm going to lose it just no, to let you know. You're safe. Okay. We'll see. Hmm. All right. Well, I will give my first. And keep in mind, these are bold predictions, right? These, these aren't just like, you know, oh, Trevor Lawrence is going to have a good year. Like, come on. We, we have to go outside the box. Reputation's on the line. Oh, boy. And, and something we can come back, you know, six, seven months from now and be like, I told you. Here's my first bold prediction. And keep in mind, it's bold. I think Tank Bigsby oh, no. will have more rushing touchdowns oh, no. than Travis Etienne. And here's why. And I'm going to back it up. I'm not just going to say something and not like back it up a little bit. I think the Jaguars are going to rely more of a power run game. I think the fact that we've seen, and I'm not breaking any news because you can go on any kind of you know social media video of the Jaguars practice, you see this. The fact that they're implementing fullbacks or at least you know tight ends in the backfield leans me to believe that they will focus more on on the eye on the power game, and I think that's going to be conducive to Tank's, Tank Bigsby. I think the Jaguars are going to limit Travis Etienne's reps this year for a couple reasons. Number one, keep him healthy. Number two, in hopes of resigning him, the last thing you want a guy to do is go off for a crazy amount of touchdowns and a crazy amount of yards. So enter Tank Bigsby, and also. We've talked about the Alvin Kamara, Mark Ingram comparisons. Well, when Mark Ingram was doing his thing in New Orleans, he was the goal line back. And I think this team's offense will be successful this year. I think they're going to rely a lot on the goal line, get close to the end zone, and that's going to be Tank Bigsby's um, area of expertise. So once again, I think Tank Bigsby, in my first bold prediction, will have more rushing touchdowns than Travis Etienne. Etienne had like 11, right? I'm aware. I'm aware. This is bold. I, bold. It's called bold for a reason. Bold. bold. Um, so I agree with you to a point, and that's how I get to mine. Okay. I agree that they're going to run the ball and power run a lot more because you talk about fullbacks. We talked about center. Also, I'm still under the impression that your best player is Travis Etienne. So that's where I disagree with you in terms of limiting his reps okay. because the number one thing you have to know this year is that Trevor Lawrence is great, mm-hmm. right? Because if you're not going, I mean, we'll see what they do. But at the end of the day, you got to win and you got to know your quarterback's great. How do you do that? You run the ball. Mm-hmm. So I think Travis Etienne will end up with at least 500 more yards than he had last year. Ooh. I think if they had okay. a capable – Run blocking offensive line last year, he would have dominated. Sure, because he had the touchdowns, he had those numbers. Yeah, you're that was kind of a disaster. You bring in the center, everything I think gets better off of that. If you run the ball better, Trevor Lawrence is better. Play, you get where I'm going there. But you got to win, and mm-hmm. you got to do everything you can to put the best team around Trevor Lawrence. The best team around Trevor Lawrence involves Travis Etienne running the football at a high clip. I think he gets a bunch of carries. I think he gets a bunch more yards. So. Y- it's wild how we're kind of on the same page here with this offense could look like in terms of running the ball more, helping Trevor out. I think a lot of play action, but we obviously disagree in terms of what the usage will be. Mm-hmm. Are you worried about from Travis Etienne? Because I mean, the, the guys had a full workload. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, because there was nobody to depend on last year. Are you afraid of like wearing him down? I just think no. I, the answer is no. And I think when you t- you mentioned it about like a contract and potential extending him, yeah. How many times do we have to see the running backs in this league just don't come back? Saquon didn't go, but like he did one year, but yeah, yeah. he's gone now. Josh Correct. Jacobs is gone now. The only guy that's going it's back wild. is Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, right. Yeah, so, and, and you have no choice there because that's no that's that off because he's the best player on the team. So I would love to sit here and be like, oh yeah, they're setting it up so they can resign Travis Etienne. Are they gonna? Because nobody resigns their running back. It's a good point. So I think if you're in a position where he's fully healthy, you now have maybe the best situation for him to excel, give him the football as many times as you can. And I think the goal, the Mark Ingram stuff obviously has been talked about. And I think on the goal line, Tank Bigsby is a great option. But I, every time last year and any time that he's been on the team, really, when they take Travis Etienne off of the football field, I think they're making a grave mistake. Mm. Because he is, last year, I would make the argument, he was your only home run hitter most of the time. 
Mm-hmm. You get him the football at any point in time, he could score, whether he catches it 40 yards behind the line of scrimmage, you run up the middle, he can always do that. So if you take that guy off the field, you lose that. Because at the end of the day, I think if you're a defense, you got to be like, okay, he can still get the football here. So that's why when you're talking about the reps and the goal line stuff with Tank Bigsby, if you're giving it to him on like the five, the four, you know that I'm yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's that's what I'm. That's what I'm yeah. thinking's gonna happen. But the idea, if there's a scenario that they're taking him off the field a lot more for Tank Bigsby to get reps, I am not a fan of that at all. No, and, and I agree with you. I think I'm putting more faith in the fact that their offense will be successful and drive down to the goal. I mean, essentially, what I'm looking at here would be like I'm trying to compare a team. What you had last year with the Lions. You'd be the first one to say the Lions had a great offense last year, Mm -hmm. right? Jared Goff got paid because of that. Well, you had a guy in Jameer Gibbs who looks to be the future in the NFL. Great passing um, receiver at the running back position, can run between the tackles, can do it all. But you had a guy in David Montgomery who did more of like the dirty work, right? Because they're trying to bring Gibbs along, obviously, and they want to throw too much at him. Now, it's a different situation where Tank Bigsby is the younger running back, the less experienced running back, but I think it falls in the same category where if you can have that bruising style with David Montgomery and obviously get all that goal line work and then have the the explosiveness, the elusiveness of Jamar Gibbs, I think you have something there. So that's – I guess it's me more speaking into existence of what I want to see from this team. I want to see them pound the rock with Tank Bigsby. And then I want to see the, the 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 burning ability of a Travis Etienne. And I want to see at the goal line, you don't get fancy. Like, I get it. You got Evan Ingram. You got some big-time receivers now and all this stuff. Keep it simple. Do what Dan Campbell does. Here, David Montgomery. I'm going to hand the ball off. Go, you know, take it home. That's fair. So that's, that's where I got my Tank Bigsby numbers from. Hamby, your first bold prediction. Um, he, He's... For whatever reason, still flying under the radar, not because people have forgotten about him, okay, but they have forgotten how good he is. Christian Kirk, uh, career highs in catches and yards 90 balls, 1300 yards, uh, which would far eclipse um, his, his previous uh, career high in yards, which was 2022 with 1100. So 90 balls. 1,300 yards for Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk. Okay, Hamby. Now, I, I, I'm not mad at it. Trevor Lawrence's go-to guy. They've been handing out this offseason. Okay. Because, I mean, m- most people would say, yeah, yeah, he's really good, but his reduction is probably – or he could see a little reduction just because, you know, now that we got Gabe in the offense and mm-hmm. Brian Thomas and we might run the ball a little bit more, but – I think, Could be the forgotten guy. Right. Okay, so to to kind of piggyback off that a little bit, do you think Christian Kirk's going to have the best fantasy season than of any Jags wide receiver? Yes. No, I'm going to keep it everything I'm out of it. Okay. Yes. So out of the Jags receiver, you thinking Christian Kirk best fantasy numbers? 100%. Okay. Casey, okay, so your thoughts? Yeah? Yeah. You for that? I don't know if he's going to have the numbers that Hammy thinks he's going to have, but I think he's the guy. The guy. I know. See, to me, it's almost too obvious, though. Like, I, I, I can see, like, and I thought about going this direction. I didn't, I didn't go this direction, but, like, I thought, like, could Gabe Davis be really be the sleeper of this whole group? Because, and I get to Hamby's point, like we forgot about Christian Kirk. Well, we didn't, but the national media pundits have. But I feel like around our circle, mm-hmm. around people in town on Twitter, we're excited for Brian Thomas Jr. We know what Christian Kirk brings. I feel like Gabe Davis is the odd man out here, and I feel like Gabe Davis could have the most boom potential. Yeah, I mean, Gabe Davis might be the difference between like – a successful season and a great season. Sure. In your, I mean, idea there. And I don't think you're wrong because he is kind of in that sleeper role. But think about two years ago when the Jags went to the playoffs and won a playoff game, Zay Jones was that guy. Exactly. And it was it was great. So I think in that mold, yes, mm-hmm. he would be the the person for that role to potentially have. But I wonder now with what, Evan Ingram has become and mm-hmm. what he became last year, does that role as a wide receiver still exist or does Evan Ingram just take another knock? Yeah. Out? Okay. So I'm going to go with my second bold prediction in case if you've been listening to the show, you probably haven't. Uh, I'm a big fan of this guy. I'm going to combine it with my sleeper of the year that I had yeah. last week. I mean, you know, I'm going with this Hamby. I got to go here again. Uh, I got to speak this into existence. Travis Gibson. Okay. Is going to have seven or more sacks this year for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think Travis Gibson is a guy who – Travis or Travis? I keep messing up his name. Travis. Travis. Okay. Travis, Travis. Um, Gibson 
is a guy. <laughs> Gibson's a guy who I think is drastically slept on. Um, I get it. His best career came in 2021 with seven sacks from the Chicago Bears. I'm not even looking more at what his career stats say or what his attributes say. I'm looking more at what this team has responded to the edge rusher. And I see a guy in Ryan Nielsen who I think knows pass rushers, who knows defense, obviously, knows defensive linemen. And I see a team that didn't draft an edge rusher in the, in the, in the, in the, in the early rounds when they very well could have. I see a team that hasn't addressed the position at all in terms of free agency in the offseason. So I think we are sleeping on Gibson just because, you know, he's not really a household name and we can say, well, you know, go after this one guy, we can get some more edge rushers. I think they are there. And I think when you have a guy in Eric Armstead who's going to drastically improve the interior and you have bona fide ends and Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen who can do different things with them, move them down a little bit. I think Gibson's going to be essentially what they had. Um, it would have been two years ago now with uh, – well, I can't think of his name. The, the, the guy that had all the energy. Arden Key. Arden Key. Thank you very much. I think he could be like the next Arden Key um, and actually maybe have even better numbers than Arden Key had. Huh. Thoughts? Right. Casey? Yeah, Casey's like, eh, we'll see. <laughs> cool. Now, right. hey, if they if they bring in another free agent pass rusher, then yeah, I'm going to have to change my tune a little bit. But where it stands right now, I think this this defensive line can be so talented where I think you can just fall into some quarterback sacks. Uh, here's why I, I like it. My last great moment when we were doing the show in the other spot yeah. before it all went down yeah. uh, was me raving about Ryan Nielsen and just how much I think the defensive line and the edge rushers get better because sure. of it. So I buy into it there, but then I come back and say, all right, well, this is still the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mm. So, you know, just keep that in mind. <laughs> so you're telling me Josh is going to have double digits. Yeah. You're telling me Trayvon's probably going to have double digits. Mm-hmm. Eric Armstead, probably going to get a few. You're telling me there's another person that's going to get seven? Like, that's not what the Jags do. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the part where I'm like, eh. But then I believe in the new defense that they're putting together, so I do think it is possible. It, it, I mean, listen, it would have to be – I'm not sure like, what that looks like, Yeah. right? But I'm going to have to come up with a new one because y'all are – it's a different if it's a different take, but it's too similar. Okay. Well, hey, I mean, hey, if you're on the edge rushers, don't be afraid to throw out Trayvon Walker or something like that. I mean, I was I was leaning towards Trayvon Walker could have more quarterback sacks than Josh Allen, but I wasn't ready to pull that trigger yet. I was about to pull that one. So, oh, is that what you're gonna pull? Well, that was my second. Okay. Well, if you want, one. I mean, hey, keep it if you want it. But in case I'll, I'll go real quick. Go yeah, because we're on the topic. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say the Jags will be top three in sacks this year as a team when we were, I think, twentieth. Ooh, last yeah. year. So you would have to buy into that then. Oh yeah, because Hamby's the only about, way Hamby's that, in my boat. All, there's there's only I think two for Hamby's to come true. That'd be incredible. Yeah. For yours to come true, there's only one of two things that have happened. One, Hamby's also came true. Correct. Or two, either Trayvon Walker or Josh Allen is not good in that department. Sure. This year. So sure. We were 25th last year. Which is and, what, but and, and there's it, a lot of teams like one close. or two. No, I hear it's right? it's close, but think about this: you had and the two, two best edge rushers in the NFL last year, right? And you still finished 25th in sacks, right? The Ravens that's were, wild. Were first with 60, and we had 40, and Josh Allen and Trayvon were 27 and a half. Yeah, so there's room, but there's like. Room. Is he on the field? Like, I just don't know the answer I to don't. that. I, I mean, like, did he move Trayvon down? What is Devin Lloyd going to do, too? But, yeah. I, let's see. Okay, so... so I'm you, just saying, like, with the, with the addition of Nielsen, top with three. Armstead, with Gibson giving a couple... I'm not saying Gibson's going to have... I mean, obviously, if this were to... For this to happen, Gibson needs to have six, seven, something in that area. Yeah. Right. Um, maybe you Mason Smith runs into a few. Um, you know, you're still going to get a couple from Devin Lloyd. Um, if you can get you would hope. five from Devin Lloyd instead of the two that we've been seeing, you would hope, right? That's that's a plus. Um, so, yeah, I think, I mean, that that would be amazing because that's really since Saxonville, that was like the one year of yeah. me watching that we've had consistent pressure on the quarterback and been like, other than the end of last year, yeah, it was like. When it was a tough third down, or like we really need to get off the field, we're like, oh, I actually have some confidence that Josh is going to get back there, or at least affect the play. Or there was times, a lot of years, where it was just like, 
We're almost just hoping that the other uh, quarterback throws an incompletion. Now, Hamby, um, I have a theory here. I have no idea what the list is, but could you read off like the top five teams of last year in terms of quarterbacks? Do you have, you have the list in front of you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Give me the top five teams because I have a theory here. Okay. Ravens, 60. Yeah. Ch- Chiefs, 57. Yep. Dolphins, 56. Yep. Bills, 54. Okay. Colts, 51. Then Browns. Colts had fifty one the, 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 sacks. They drafted an edge rusher top fifty. See, here's the thing. I, I had a I had a theory going, and then well, I guess it's still following the theory, but then the Colts kind of threw it off a little bit. So, I mean, you can put the Colts in category if you want to, but you're talking about offensive teams that score a lot of points, and when you score a lot of points, your yeah. opponent plays from behind a lot, so you know what they're gonna do, yeah, yeah. right? Like, and, and that's the question with this Jaguars team: is do they? We think they do. Can they have the capabilities to put up enough points where you put your opponent in bad situations where you have to pass the ball? They obviously didn't do it last year, and you know the numbers could be lacking a little bit. Like I think they have all the talent, Hamby. Like to tackle your point, I think they have all the talent to be at least top five. But their offense also has to be conducive and play ball as well, and put their opponents in bad positions to get quarterback sacks. Like to that, there's there was only when I'm looking at this list, there's only one really good team that was not great in this category that was near the Jags, and that's the Lions. Mm-hmm. They only yeah. had one more sack than we did. Yeah. And they're a team that scored a lot of points. True. And I wouldn't have guessed that. And, you that's know, shocking. I, yeah. you that know, is I, a little shocking. You know, I know Hutchinson is good. He didn't have a, an unbelievable year. But it seemed like they just had so many different guys that just kind of 41. That's it. Okay. Jaguars top three from Hamby in quarterback sacks. I like it. Bold. Very bold. Casey. Yeah, I bold mean, pick number two. This I'll go defense because I have one. Uh, it's not really like a stat, like line, if you will. Okay. Uh, I just think that the Tyson Campbell from last year doesn't exist. I don't think he's a real person. <laughs> I think Tyson Campbell's good, right? Last year, Tyson Campbell was was not. I don't think that's a real person. I just think it's it is what it is. So I think this year, Tyson Campbell goes back to the guy that we thought he was two years ago. He. I guess finishes that development. He's good. He's real good, and he forces the Jags to pay him a lot of money. So, do you think he's going to stay? That's my next question. Do you think he's going to stay in Jacksonville? I think he puts up a good enough year that it's hard to let him go. It's hard to let him go. I I, I really do think he's good. I mean, last year, I, I just think it was a debacle on so many fronts. Like, there's so many other things that went wrong. The cornerback position didn't help, but I think Tyson Hill was really good. Yeah, and I think he'll get back to that. I think he'll be that dude. And then if the Jags do choose to pay him, then you feel really fantastic about going forward with your secondary. Love that. I mean, I'm not mad at that at all. Um, I mean, that would be huge. I mean, that'd be everything. And listen, like, and I've said this many times in the show. Tyson Campbell was hurt last year. All right, he had a soft tissue injury that he kind of played through a little bit. And if you want to give Trevor Lawrence his flowers and say, all right, he had a he had a rough year last year because of the injuries, then you better do the same thing for Tyson Campbell because we have seen Tyson Campbell um, be great, and we've seen Tyson Campbell improve. Remember, his rookie year was all about he's not getting his head around quick enough to make plays on the ball. Yep. Well, he took that upon himself, and he got better doing that, got some interceptions from doing that. So it's not a bad thing, and definitely, like, I, I get, okay, we got to pay Trevor Lawrence, but... You, if he does perform like we think he can perform in Tyson Campbell, you got to keep him. You, you have to start setting a precedent now of when you draft your guys and they play well, you don't lose them. You keep them. Like that's that's one big pillar of building a successful franchise. I mean, he's basically he wasn't, but he's basically a first rounder. He's picked thirty three. Correct. I mean, that's yeah, a guy that you when you picked him, you envision that being somebody that you build around Correct. when they picked him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you yeah. got to do that if he performs the way that I think he will. No, that's that, that's absolutely fair. Um all right, my last bold prediction. And it's kind of it's going to copy a little bit what Hamby was trying to say in terms of the wide receiver position, but I'm going in a different um player here. Oh. I think the most productive fantasy player for the wide receiver core, sitting Evan Ingram out, I think BTJ, I think Brian Thomas Jr. could have the best fantasy numbers of any Jaguars player. For a, a, a case call and timeout. Because of, if you're talking fantasy, yes. you're saying he's going to have the points because of touchdowns or catches. So I think it's going to be a combination of both, but I'm going to rely more on the touchdowns 
than the receptions. Like I think Chris, I, I agree with him here. I think Christian Kirk's going to have the most receptions of the, of the Jaguars. Receivers or overall? Uh, uh, probably receivers. Okay. I, I think he might be a, even be a bit of Evan Ingram. All right. But I think, I think Brian Thomas Jr. could have more touchdowns. And I get it. Like he, he's a rookie. You know, sometimes rookie receivers it takes a little bit. Sometimes they can come out like DK Metcalf, and you don't skip a beat. You know, he's like, got to have to score a, a lot more touchdowns to cover all those balls that he's not. If if we're talking PPR, like it's very. I'm talking half point, but yeah, but I mean that's 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 what I play in handy. But uh, yeah, I, mean, I probably should have been a little more clarifying in that. But yeah, I'm talking half point PPR in my league that I play. Because I'm thinking with like, back home. Christian Crook's probably going to catch like maybe 30 more balls. Like well, it's going to be like an 80 50. Something like that. Th- th- that so that's five, yeah. six touchdowns. That very well could be, but I think what slept on a lot, because keep in mind, Christian Kirk, he's a slot guy, so you can do a lot of things with him, right? So he's getting the receptions. But also, I can see Brian Thomas Jr. getting some of those bubble fans in the outside, kind of getting all like those gadget plays too, because what slept on is we always get so infatuated with his numbers in terms of the deep ball, but the guy, as coaches have said, yeah. as Doug Peterson has said, can run the route tree. He, he can do it all. Now, he wasn't asked to do it all at LSU, but I think he has the capabilities to do that. And if you have like the, the wide receiver option routes where you kind of have a little free reign of what you want to run, we hear all the time, IQ, 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 Brian Thomas Jr. has it. So if you can find that, that soft space and zone coverage, I think him and Trevor could have a, a really successful season. So go ahead and give me Brian Thomas Jr. in a half-point PPR be leading the Jaguars receiving core in terms of fantasy points. Once again, I know it's out there. It's, it's a bold prediction, but that's why they call it bold predictions. All right, Casey, your last Jaguars bold prediction. Yeah, back on offense. None of mine have anything to do with wide receiver, so we'll see oh, how that plays yeah, out. Yeah. I, I think they're guard gonna, points. Can be like, ah, oh, this guy's going to have like the highest PPF. The PPF. Ezra, Ezra PPF. Cleveland Pro Bowl. Ezra Cleveland doesn't miss a block. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ezra Cleveland, Cleveland has the Cooper? highest PFF grade of all Jaguars linemen. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. Uh, no, it's not that. Um, I think they're going to run the ball a lot. I think they will throw it, but the prediction would be Evan Ingram, who's done a lot for the Jags. Yes. Hasn't scored a lot of touchdowns. Just in his Jags score, eight total, four and four. And last year he didn't get one until like week twelve, which is wild to think about it Isn't for it? how many receptions he had, which I think was like was it first in tight ends, yeah, in the NFL last yeah. year, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think maybe the catches come down, but I think he goes over his Jags career total in touchdowns this year. So in one he's season, he's going over eight touchdowns this in year. one season. Yes, I think it just mm-hmm. has it's it has to happen at some point, right? When you catch like a hundred footballs in the tight end position, like it it has to happen. It's so odd that it hasn't at the high clip. So I just think this year is the year the touchdowns explode for Evan Ingram. I mean, and then that makes a lot of sense. You have Doug Peterson who loves the tight end position. You know, you got Brenton Strange here for a reason. So he loves the tight end position. You have Evan Ingram last year who was arguably Trevor Lawrence's most consistent mm-hmm. receiving threat. See, I like it. I go off of that because, and it goes back to the first one, right? I agree with you that I think they're going to run the ball more consistency, mm-hmm. consistently, I should yep. say, with consistency. Uh, but I think where we differ is when I when they get to the red zone, I think they call it, and then the play action is just wide open, and sure. that gets at, so I think those red zone touchdowns come to Evan Ingram more yeah. so than Tank Bigsby. That's yeah. what I think. And once again, like we we've seen. And once I'm not breaking any news here, just go on any video that people like the, the, the beat reporters have been posting with Evan Ingram. He has been in the backfield a little bit. So like do you use him kind of like uh, you know, Kyle's use check or whatever from San Fran, where he does a bunch of different things, but he gets a lot of love. And obviously I think Evan Ingram is gonna be a more successful if they do use Evan Ingram as an H back a little bit out of various exotic formations, I mean, he's the fail safe. He's mm-hmm. he's the guy, like I said, that's been the most consistent thing on this offense last year. I'm not mad at that. I'm not sure what Vegas has to say about it, but that might be one to look at uh, in Vegas as well, or else go down to Tony to the docks and he'll hook you up. Uh, Hamby, your last Jaguars bold prediction. Put a bow on this thing. It's going to be a little weird one. We we specialize in weird. Logan Cook. Mac Mac Jones will be an NFL starter on another football team by week 12. Wow. That's not bad. I see where you're going there. I'm going to say this. I think this is the most bold prediction out of all of ours, hands down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to get like a third round pick. 
Ooh. Ooh, now we're talking. Okay, well, Hamby, break it down. Like, what's going to happen? The team is going to get hurt? Yeah, or, there's going to be, I mean. Does I Mac mean, Jones ever play for the Jags in this scenario? No. Sight unseen, they're trading for Mac Jones. Yes. Love it. Okay. Preseason, I mean, yeah, preseason. Preseason go well, Mac Jones. Mac Jones, and I mean, obviously you're not really putting any weight into that. But there's going to be a team that recognizes his talent and how much that the Patriots ran him into the ground with zero weapons, a defensive coordinator as his offensive coordinator, yep. and okay. no help and injuries and a bad offensive line. Come on. And is so desperate because there's 12 teams by week 13 that either have a hampered quarterback or one that's out for the season. Facts. And he's the best option. He's young. He's extendable. And yeah. they're like, okay, Mac Jones. And they gave us a third-round pick. And – Austin has to go down to Everbank Field, or Stadium, excuse me, with flowers for Trent Baalke because he actually crushed that trade if that Edible ever happens. Yeah. Because he just swapped the six for a third, no problem. And mm-hmm. Mac Jones, appreciate your time. I'm glad you got some restoration and, uh, uh, in Jacksonville and clean slate and, and go win a football game for another squad. All right. Ah. First of I all, don't hate it. Okay, first of all, l- l- let me go ahead and put out the, the, the bat signal. Anybody in the chat have any predictions? We'll write them down too and uh, hold you guys accountable. That'd be bold predictions, not Trevor Lawrence going to have a good season. But if you got something in the chat, let us know. Now, Hamby, in your scenario then, do they keep CJ Beathard too? Or is it going to be the Jaguars having to find like a practice squad guy to bring up? Or do they go out and try to get like a backup quarterback someplace else? Yes, that's a that's. To be honest, I haven't thought that far ahead. Well, oh, like, yep, that, um, that's why I'm here. So I, I don't know if it really makes sense to keep three guys. Um, Some on teams your do it roster, but mm-hmm. like both guys are under like CJ Beathard. Ha- like you're not going to practice squad him. Yeah. And if you would have, if you wanted to cut him, I feel like you would have done it by now because yeah. you have Mac Jones. Um, so. I think you keep all three, and CJ's just like still the, the number next. two guy, and yeah. yeah, you ride with him. Yeah, I I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm with him on the logic because I don't think Mac Jones is as bad as it looked at the end of New England, or everything Hamby said. Like, correct? Can you I, can you imagine if you were playing defense, right? Yes. And your dude, whoever your coach gets fired, yeah. And the guy they bring it in, happened a couple times, but yes. And the guy they bring in is like a quarterbacks coach. Yeah. That's what they did to Mac Jones, just in the flip. Like, how could you possibly expect him to be good? I'm not sitting here and saying that he's the greatest to ever play because he's not. But yeah. what I am saying is I agree with Hamby in the sense of, like, he should probably be competing to be somebody's starting quarterback in I the mean, grand scheme of things. It, it's wild how a few years ago, out of Mac Jones, Zach Wilson, Trevor Lawrence, and I was kind of in this category, too. I'm like, wow, Mac Jones might be the best quarterback of that class mm-hmm. because, like, Great rookie campaign. And a cerebral assassin in terms of, you know, checking out of things, audibles. Like, as a rookie, he was doing that. I'm like, wow, this is something to this guy. And then, obviously, you know, and I agree with you, Casey, where it's like coaching didn't do it their due diligence, I think, and help him out. You bring in Bailey Zappi, then it's like a quarterback carousel. Right. Does nothing for your confidence if you're Mac Jones. I get all of that. And, like, you know how I feel about it. I've said it many times. I think he's a great quarterback. I think he's a great backup quarterback. Now, is he a good backup quarterback for Trevor Lawrence? Probably not. If you don't keep C.J. Beathard, I don't think so because I'm under the philosophy until the quarterback's ready to take over and you know be elite, you got to have a guy to bounce stuff off of. You know, you, you have to have a Chad Henney. You you have to have a um, who's the, <laughs> the the guy from the zoo that has. Uh, Chase Daniel. Chase Daniel. Yeah, yeah. you, you got to have one of those guys. Or Gabbert. You could take or, or, or Blaine Gabbert at, at this point of his career. You know, like, Mac Jones isn't that guy. Because Mac Jones, I think, and I think a lot of people would agree, can still play at the starting quarterback level. So, I'm not mad at it, Hamby. And if the Jaguars were to trade for that third-round pick or second-round pick, then, yeah, guess what? Edible Rangers going to Trent Baalke. For sure. But, like, do you I, – I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It depends how – how desperate a team's going to be if they wanted to trade for him? Like, what, what would a trade cost? Do you think it would be like a third-round pick for Mac Jones? It's probably a little high unless you're talking about a team that's good. Like, if a midway team gets their quarterback hurt, they're probably not doing that. But, like, say say the Jets start out 6-2 and two and Rodgers gets hurt again. Yeah. You're, you're trying to salvage that. 
if well i guess atlanta drafted Penix, but you know it's got to be something like that mm -hmm. i think but like a team that's or well, like if, if the same thing i'm looking at last year if, okay. if cleveland scenario but okay now look at it like this and i'm not comparing these two guys because they're different players but like th this could theoretically what hamby's saying here this could be like a lot like the vikings had when Kirk cousins went down hamby obviously in tears it's his favorite player and they they had to go get Josh Dobbs from the Cardinals, mm -hmm. the astronaut. And and the Vikings traded. It would have been a seventh rounder and a six rounder. Okay, I'm sorry. The, so the Vikings gave up a six rounder to get Joshua Dobbs. Now They're this is of, huh? They weren't in it. No, but this is the same Joshua Dobbs though that you know had a little nice run with Tennessee Titans. Now, it wasn't because of him, but, like, he was still on the Titans. Yeah. When, so, like, I, I guess, okay, if you traded for, and by the way, it worked out really well for the Vikings. Like, Dobbs had him playing at a very high level, mm -hmm. all things considered. So, if you're talking about a six-rounder for Dobbs, like, do you think that if the situation happens, the team gets super desperate, you think Mac Jones warrants a third-round pick? Or would it be, like, a fourth or fifth? Probably fourth or fifth. Okay. Unless you're, if you're in it, in it. If you're in the thick of it. And you look at because like what are the other options going to be if you get to week yeah seven, I hear you. eight mm -hmm. like if you're I imagine you're calling Pittsburgh for Fields could call Houston for for Joe Flacco yeah I guess yeah. I mean I just there's not a ton of great great options I like the thought but also I think if you're talking about like Mac Jones is here but Minnesota who drafted a quarterback like Mac Jones or Denver. Think about those two teams. They drafted quarterbacks, right? If Mac Jones was on one of their rosters, he'd probably end up being the quarterback. True. Just in yeah. like yeah, yeah. he's good enough to be somebody's starting quarterback, I think. So I don't think Hamby's far off.